Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to another edition of Coffee and Conversation. I'm so glad that you took some time to join us today. As we've done for many, many weeks, we open God's Word and and talk a little bit about it, have a little devotional and prayer, and hopefully the words that we, we share with you um, have meaning in your life and you're encouraged by them. Last week we talked about Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and I just want to go briefly and talk about it a little bit further. Um, for the sake of repetition and for the sake of review, let's read the verse together again. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So last week, as we began our reflection on Romans 8.28, it stated very clearly that God is at work, at work for good in all things. Now you may think that while God's goodness might be experienced to those who perhaps do not recognize him. You know, the Bible talks about that the rain falls on the just and unjust. And yeah, God's goodness can be experienced by those who don't recognize him. The focus, however, of Romans 8, 28 is specifically on those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And so today, I just want to focus on that aspect. We are called according to God's purpose. That's what it's describing for us according to Romans 8.28. Now, the meaning of the word purpose in this verse has to do with a plan, uh, a resolve, will, and the same word that's used in Romans 8.28 also appears in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, it says these words, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. So what is this plan? What is this purpose that is being described here? Well, it includes God's intention to save us through Jesus Christ, to save us through the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus. But God's purpose is also broader than my personal salvation. As wonderful as my salvation is, God's purpose is bigger and goes beyond that. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, we learn about what this plan is that God has for my life. And this, it says, and this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. In other words, through Christ, God is not just saving individual people, but also the whole broken cosmos, the universe, the universe that is broken. God is restoring all that which was shattered by sin. So God's purpose in, in these verses, his plan for your life and my life is not only to save us from the ravages of sin, as wonderful and as powerful as that is, but his purpose is also to enlist us as his partners towards a saving purpose. We are partners in his saving purpose. This is made abundantly clear in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. If I, and if I could just take a moment to look this verse up in the Bible and share it with you. In Ephesians chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, you may want to join with me. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 through verse 11, look what it says. God's purpose, God's plan, 
in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, this is God's plan for the ages. His plan, namely, is that the people of God, the church, including you and me, are essential to his purposes of letting the whole of leading the whole cosmos the universe the world this planet to come to know the salvation that is found only in Christ Jesus so let me summarize and make it as simply put it as simply as i possibly can god's purpose includes restoring all the broken stuff because of sin, including the saving of fellow human beings. But that's not just the end of God's purpose. His plan also includes calling human beings, you and me, together as the church of Jesus Christ so that we might participate in God's saving restorative work on this planet. My friends, God has called us. God has called us because his purpose for your life and his purpose for my life not only involves saving us from sin, but it's been mobilizing us, mobilizing us as his partners in the redemption process. Just as we were once charged with helping the world to be fruitful, to be full, as we discover in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and verse 28, this is what the Bible says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. And now in Ephesians and in Romans, we learn that we are also charged with helping the world experience this salvation of God to the fullest extent. Because you and me have been called, according to God's eternal purpose, your life has purpose, my life has purpose. In fact, we have eternal purpose. And your calling goes much further than maybe your career, your, your family, or perhaps even your volunteer work, or it goes beyond your retirement. God is summoning you, you and me, to join in God's worldwide work. The more God's cosmic purpose, the more God's eternal purpose resonates within your spirit and in your soul, the more God's purpose will shape your everyday life in all that you do, in all who you are, as you walk day by day in the good work that God has designed for you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He created in us anew Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That's Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. So as I close today, let me ask you today, as you're listening to my voice, as you read these scriptures that we've talked about, Romans 8, 28 and in Ephesians, as you listen to these verses, let me close today and ask you this. Do you really believe that there is purpose in your life? That God has a purpose for your life? And if so, how would you define God's purpose in your life? Let's pray together. I thank you, God, today for your amazing plan to restore and to unify all things in Jesus. And by your grace, Lord, you have a plan for all of our lives. You have a plan for my life. And I pray today, Lord, that you would deepen my understanding, in fact, broaden my understanding of your overall purpose for me 
And as I grow in this understanding, may I begin to see my whole life as a reflection of your purpose. I pray, Lord, that everything that I do, that whatever I participate in, God, that my gifts and my talents that you have bestowed upon me may glorify you. And as I walk through this earth, as I walk through my day-by-day experience, experiences, Lord, as I walk in the good works that you have planned for me, may you receive all the praise, glory, and honor that is due your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I trust these words are meaningful to you and that they're an encouragement to you and that you can take them to heart and they will bless your day today. We'll see you again soon and we look forward to these weekly engagements in coffee and conversation. Have a great day. Have a blessed week. God bless you. Amen.